Next, from the state capitol, Governor Quinn is joined by lawmakers and protesters to rally for restrictions on any bill that will legalize concealed carry in Illinois. Recently, a federal judge ordered Illinois to pass a concealed carry law by June, ruling the state was violating the Second Amendment by denying citizens the right to carry a concealed weapon. Illinois is now the only state in the nation to not have a concealed carry law. This runs about 45 minutes. When we, when we look to the state legislature for leaders on the issue of gun violence prevention, the first name at the top of the list, and not just because he's the first elected out here, is State Senator Dan Katowski. Yeah. Senator Katowski. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to see everybody here today. It's so good that you came and turned out. You know when the other side shows up here, they shut down the building. Wow. The streets are closed, right? Wow. Yeah. You gotta remember that. We have to remember that. Because as Dr. King said, our lives begin to end when we're silent about things that matter, right? Because yeah. this is our time to speak up, yeah. right? Speak up if you support universal background checks. Yeah. Speak up if you want people to report loss and stolen firearms. Yeah. Speak up if you want to support our children from assault yeah. weapons on the streets. Yeah. Speak up if you think it's too much that somebody has a 50 round ammunition magazine. Yeah. Look, this is the last unregulated consumer industry in the United States of America. Teddy bears are more regulated yeah. than guns. Teddy bears are tested for sharp edges, points, flammability, loose parts. How many children? died from teddy bears last year. How many? It's because we took the steps to protect children from unsafe teddy bears. Why can't we not do the same with guns? See, you're here today to send a message, a very clear message. Look, this isn't about law-abiding citizens, right? This isn't about them. We know people, are, we, we respect people's individual rights, their civil liberties, we respect that. This is about the fact that every time a gun is used in a crime in our communities, the question needs to be asked, who made the gun? Yeah. Yeah. Who sold the gun? Yeah. Who owned the gun? Yeah. How did it get into our streets and our children's hands? Yeah. Who is responsible? Yeah. We have to take responsibility for this, and we have to make sure we hold people like me accountable. That's right. Am I not right? Yeah. Is this our opportunity? Yeah. Make sure you have your voices heard today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Katowski. Yes. Next, we'll be joined by Bishop Christopher Epstein of the Episcopal Diocese of Chicago. Right. Yeah. Hey, Bishop. Yeah. Hello, Springfield. Hello. I am Bishop Christopher Epting, and I'm here representing the uh, Episcopal Diocese of Chicago stand together to call for common sense gun legislation across this country and in Illinois. Yeah. All of you know that are here, I'm sure that since the devastation at Sandy Hook, over 3,300 people in this country have been killed by gun violence. I know that many of you have put your faith into action by participating in Chicago Crosswalk because you know that we have to stop this epidemic. We have to stop it and the time is now. As this Illinois legislature is being forced by the Seventh Circuit Court decision to implement a law to the carrying of concealed loaded weapons in public places, we call on lawmakers to use this opportunity to pass the strongest possible gun laws in this country. Yeah. A law that limits guns in places like schools and stadiums and government buildings and public transportation, for heaven's sake. A law that mandates strong training requirements and for permit holders to have an awfully good cause for being issued one. We must balance the Second Amendment with the rights we have to live in peace and free from fear of another life lost to gun violence. Yes. As this General Assembly takes up this task, they are in our prayers, but we stand in support of common sense gun laws on this day. Thank you. You're ready, Juju, right? Yeah. 
America. We're going to have a voice for common sense gun laws that should come out should never come out of this person's mouth. When a 10-year-old child stands before you, 10 still, right? 11 now. See how long he's been involved in this? When an 11-year-old boy stands here and has more wisdom than a lot of adults in this state and in this country, there's a problem. And the fact that he's come all the way down here today to speak to you isn't just about the miles that he's traveled. It's about the journey. Having lost his brother, he's become a, a mouthpiece for common sense gun laws, organizing young people his age and older. It is my honor, my pleasure, my privilege to introduce to you the guy who will be here if we don't pass these bills this year, next year, in my place, Julian Roman. Julian. Let him go and then I'll get you next. We're, we're all speaking together. Okay, then go. But you got like two minutes. That's right. Sorry. We represent the voices of the surviving siblings. My name is Victor Valencia and I'm 21 years old. My brother was murdered when I was 17 at a party. And I demand that weapons, concealed weapons be banned at public places like casinos and places where they serve alcohol, like bars. Thank you. Hello, I am Julian Roman Nunez and I'm 11 years old. My brother was murdered at a gas station when I was seven years old. I demand concealed weapons be banned at stadiums, festivals, fairs, and farmer markets. Yes. 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 Hello, my name is Desiree Velasquez. I am 15 years old. My little sister was murdered on my front porch when I was 14 years old. I demand that we concealed weapons banned on public transportation and all schools. Yes. I demand change for my brother, Francisco Valencia, 21, college student. I demand, I demand change for my brother, Manuel Roman, 23, father. I demand a change for my little sister, Aaliyah Diana Shell, seven years old, a kindergartner. And we demand change because we deserve a future. Yeah. We deserve a future. 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 Thanks, guys. Future. Sorry about that. Yeah, give it up. All right. Next up. How you doing? All right. Senator Don Harmon, another strong voice in the call for common sense gun laws. Senator Harmon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for coming down. This is democracy in action and this is what makes change. So I see some friends from Austin and I see some friends from Oak Park here. Can you all raise your hands and thank you for coming down. Oh, hey, there's my Oak Park group. Now Oak Park has a long and proud tradition of standing for common sense gun safety laws and we're not ready to back down. We have a long list of things that we want and I'm going to ask you to remember just one thing. Let's always focus on our ultimate objective. We want our neighborhoods to be safer. We want our kids and our families to be safe. Anything we do has to make sure we make progress on that front. We might not get everything we want, but we're going to get safer neighborhoods. We're going to get safer communities. Our families will be safe. Our children will be safe. And all those young people who are just up here demanding justice are going to get it. God bless you all for being down here. Thank you for raising your voices here in Springfield where it really matters. The fight continues and we'll all be part of it. Thank you. If you're familiar with the cause of gun violence prevention, the next voice that will come forward is one that needs no introduction. The leader of the faith community of St. Sabina, Father right. Michael Flager, yeah. to discuss the <laughs> drive for petitions for common sense gun laws. I'm going to ask Reverend Marcy and Reverend Akri and any other pastors that are here are part of the petitioning of you come on up here. Governor, could you please come forward? And just say quickly one thing for the governor to come. And can somebody bring the two boxes and set them in front of the steps here? There we go. Can we move people back on both sides a little bit? Where's the governor at? 
Yeah. Come on, Governor. Come on over here. Come on. All right. All right. Hey, good to see you again, Governor. Just stand right down there, yeah. Yesterday, we saw in the press that an elephant that was shot in a drive-by in Mississippi was said was a federal, uh, federal offense and it was a $16,000 reward to see who shot the elephant and the elephant's fine. A child was killed last night in Chicago and another one wounded on 112th and it's not a federal offense. There's no strong gun legislation and in fact nobody yet knows how the other child is doing. Wow. Governor, we're presenting over 50,000 petitions. Yeah. But, but 50,000 petitions, and the box in front of 50,000 petitions are but a piece of the 95% of Illinois residents that want background checks. 82% who support registering guns, titling guns like cars. Yeah. These are just a small percentage of what all Illinois wants. Connecticut responded when their children got killed. Yeah. Governor, we want the legislators to support you and stand with you and support the children of Illinois and save their life gun legislation. Yeah. Governor Pequin. Well, thank you, Father Mike, and thank you all of the members of the faith community that have come here from far and wide in Illinois. We're very, very happy to have you in our state capitol. Looking over our shoulder is Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, who believed in government of the people and by the people and for the people. He said that in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on November 19th of 1863, nearly 150 years ago. Abraham Lincoln believed in the power of petition, the power of everyday people, banding together for a cause they believe in. And these petitions that I've just received today, they come from the hearts of the people of Illinois. Right. And it's so important yeah. that we send our message. And we have very devoted legislators who are committed to the cause of gun safety. They're with us here today. Senator Jackie Collins, my friend, right here. Yeah. And you just heard from Senator Don Harmon, who represents me on the west side of Chicago in Austin. Thank you, Don. And don't forget, someone who's been in this vineyard for a long, long time, and that's Senator Dan Katowski. You understand firsthand how important it is. And we have a blocking back for us. Actually, he's a linebacker, now that you think about it. He knows how to block and tackle, and he's going to help us get these bills passed. And I'm talking about a senator from the south side, Napoleon Harris. Thank you, sir. And we have members of the House. Representative Esther Golar is here. Esther, where are you? Right over there, Esther. And I came down with an alderman from the 18th Ward who came down uh, with all the people that are gathered here today, everyday people of Illinois. And that's my friend, Alderman Lona Lane. Thank you for being here, Lona. And what we have to do in the best traditions of Abraham Lincoln's democracy is listen to what people are saying all over our state, all over our country, that it's time for gun safety legislation. Uh, we have to make sure that the majority of people who are for these reforms, who are for this public safety initiative, that the people get heard in the best traditions of, of democracy. So that means today we have to talk to our legislators, the Democrats and Republicans, House and Senate, I want to just talk about a couple of those bills. One of the bills is to make sure that we limit high capacity ammunition magazines. Yeah. You know, I read in the paper last week that a mom who lost her son, a first grader in Newtown, Connecticut, she pointed out that that gunman who came into that school had 300 bullets. 300 bullets. He fired 154 shots in four minutes. Wow. Because they had a high, he had a high capacity ammunition magazine. She pointed out that if you had limited by law 
those magazines to no more than 10 bullets per magazine, many of those children who died would be alive today. Right. And so it's very important we remember that our duty, and it comes from scripture, Father, right. it says that if you save one life, you save the whole world. Right. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to save the whole world. Go ahead, come on. I want to say another thing about a great man from our state of Illinois, from Crystal Lake, Illinois. He answered the call to duty. Right. He volunteered for the United States Navy. My father served in the United States Navy for three years, one month, and 15 days. And it's very important we understand that our military is all volunteer. And so this young man from Crystal Lake, Illinois, John Larimer, he said, here I am, Lord, send me. And he answered that call to duty. He joined the Navy. He had a very high position. He happened to be in a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado right. at midnight last summer. Right. And you know, somebody came in with an assault weapon yes. and with a high capacity ammunition magazine. He killed 12 people and wounded 70 more. And one of those who were killed was John Larimer from our state. I went to his wake and I talked to his mom and dad. He's an American hero because he put his body in front of his girlfriend and saved her life. Wow. That's what we're all about. Right. We're here to save lives. Yeah. We don't want people uh, being shot down in a movie theater or a church or a political rally in Tucson, Arizona, or right. going to first grade in right. Newtown, Connecticut, or, or even in our own state, in, in DeKalb, Illinois. On Valentine's Day five right, years right. ago, a gunman right. comes into a classroom and kills five students, five good men and women. I went to each of their funerals. We're tired of going to funerals. Right. Yes. We're here to do something. Yes. And we are the people, are we not? Yes. And democracy is all about people, is it not? Yes. So let's band together and let's make the will of people the law of the land. Thank you. Okay. Before we continue, there's such a push up here. Can everybody take two steps back? Unless you're on the top up there. We, we didn't buy the insurance. Take another step back. Take another step back. Take and no deadheads in the crowd, huh? Okay. Thank you. Now we can all breathe. It's a little cold up here now. Can it? No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you, Governor Quinn. Who took a picture of that? <laughs> Tweet it out. Send it out. Facebook it out with the hashtag. Common sense for Illinois, because that's what we're talking about. The number four. When we have leadership from these elected officials and a governor like that, the change is going to come. You bet. Not only do we have political leaders willing to stand here with us today, but we know for a fact that public opinion across this country is on our side. Yes. We know that people are sick and tired of guns killing people, and people with guns killing people, and burying people, and going to funerals. And where's Camille? When this poor woman texts me every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to tell me another one of her friends dies, a part of her heart breaks, and a part of my heart breaks, and a part of all of our hearts break, right. whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. She's a voice that I'm not gonna let speak today because she didn't bring her bullhorn. <laughs> but she's a great voice. And as I mentioned, the public opinion polls and, and the surveys that show this support, it is my pleasure to introduce Colleen Daly, the Executive Director of the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence. Right. Yeah, Colleen! And if we can make sure, where's the other one of those? There's another one of these. Um, where's the sign? Can you come up here? Yep. Up here? Well, I'm not that tall. <laughs> it is great to see so many friendly faces here in Springfield. Thank you all for coming down. Why don't you, yeah, we got these two. You want to move that one up a little bit too? 
We've all read the headlines in recent weeks about other states that had mass tragic shootings. Colorado, Connecticut, and how have those states responded? Those states have responded by passing common sense gun control legislation. Things like universal background checks, uh, making sure that we ban high capacity magazine clips. But despite the fact that Chicago has tragically shared those exact same headlines for years. We suffer the tragic loss of young lives on our streets every day. But many of our electeds here in Springfield explicitly appear to be more focused on weakening our gun laws than strengthening them. We are here today for advocacy day to remind the elected officials that represent us that they represent us, not the gun lobby. We are here today to share our stories about the impact of gun violence on our communities and our families and demand that they take action to prevent it by supporting common sense safety agenda that we are here to tell them about today. And just in case our stories of countless shooting victims are not compelling enough to inspire action, maybe a new statewide poll that shows the vast majority of state support stronger gun laws will get their attention. Today we are formally announcing the results of a very groundbreaking poll on gun safety. It not only indicates that the majority of Illinois citizens support common sense measures, in fact 95% of Illinois residents support the passage of universal background checks. Yeah. Yeah. 82% of Illinois voters support titling guns like we title cars. Yeah and 93% support reporting their lost and stolen firearms to local law enforcement. Yes. Our poll also sends a warning to elected officials that voters are willing more now than ever before to hold them accountable if they don't consider these actions when voting in Springfield. Yes. We found out that 62% of Illinois voters are more likely to vote for a candidate who supports a strong, restrictive, concealed carry law that includes provisions like universal background checks, titling guns like cars, limiting high capacity magazines. And even more importantly, this support crosses all party lines. Democrats, Republicans, independents, and gun owners alike support these measures. On concealed carry, 78% of Illinois voters support a mandate that applicants must state a reason for why they want to carry and show good cause and good character. And the majority support restrictions where individuals can carry guns, like banning them on mass transit, on schools, universities, on stadiums, at casinos, and bars and restaurants. We hear today a message that we represent the majority of people in Illinois and our voices must be heard. The legislature must be reminded that we, they represent real people and their voices in Springfield on this issue will have a profound impact on repercussions on them back at home. When talking to your elected officials today, remind them that allowing citizens to carry loaded, concealed weapons in public places is an extremely serious issue. And we must pass the right kind of law with measures that ensure that the permits are not put in the wrong people's hands. We have to remind them that when they pass a concealed carry law, we should use this as an opportunity to strengthen our existing laws and close loopholes and save lives. We, again, represent the majority of people in this state and we need our voices to be heard. So when you talk to your legislators today, tell them that I am part of the majority and I stand up for common sense gun laws that will save lives. Thank you so much for being here. We've got a lot of voices that represent us in the chambers out here today with us. And it is my privilege to introduce State Representative Esther Golar. Yay! Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and to see the advocates here that is going to change the mainstream of gun laws. Yes. We appreciate all that you've done. You travel near and far, and we thank you for that. And to my colleagues that are here, I, and I won't go over everything that everyone has said, uh, Father Flager, who is our champion uh, on 
this particular initiative. The Illinois Council for Handgun Violence has been fighting for years on this initiative. And so I just want to say, over my head, I see conceal and carry everywhere. Over my head, I see legislators voting the majority. How do you follow that? Right? <laughs> Luckily, that's going to fall to Senator Jackie Collins, yeah. Jacqueline Collins, a voice of common sense on so many issues, a clear voice on gun violence prevention. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome, my faith community of St. Sabina family. Yeah. I'm proud to stand with you. I know I'm preaching to the choir, and especially after that song from my colleague. But let me just say, let me give you some figures that maybe you haven't heard. We know that this nation is saturated with guns. Yes. More than 300,000 guns, right? It's almost enough. It's 300 million guns, one gun for each man, woman, and child. And we know that every 30 minutes, a child or teen is shot yes. by gun violence. And every three hours, a child or youth dies from gun violence. Matter of fact, we have lost in Chicago more kids to gun violence yes. than soldiers in Iraq. Yes. So it's time now to say, stop the violence, yes. stop the flow of guns yes. in our communities. Yes. And I want to thank you because you represent the 92 percentile of the public right. who stands for common sense gun laws. Yes. So I leave you with this. If America and Illinois can't stand up for our children, black, white, and brown, they don't stand for anything. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you, Senator. The next voice we're going to hear from is a new voice in Springfield, but has stood up strongly, loudly, and clearly. Senator Napoleon Harris. Thank you all for coming out today. And thank you for having the courage. Yes. Standing out here in the cold. Yes. And having the courage to stand up for sensible gun legislation. Yes. Yes. Too many of our children are being gunned down in our streets and in our hoods. Right. Someone has to take charge and someone has to take a stand to protect our children. When you look around out here, we see signs. Moms demand action. Yes. Yes. Uh, love thy neighbor, not thy gun. Yes. Loose guns equals lost lives. Yes. Now for us as legislators in the General Assembly to make a change. Yes. To say enough is enough. We don't want our streets to be like the war zones in Iraq. Yes. Or in Afghanistan and all those other places. We want our streets safe and yes. we want to stop going to funerals and go to more graduations. Yes. And yes. Yes. We demand it. Our communities demand it, and the great people of Illinois demand it. So I'm here today to say I stand in support of any legislation that's going to prevent another child being lost to nonsensible gun legislation. It's time for a change, and that change is now. Thank you. Another person who needs introduction, but I'm able to do that again is a voice of peace across issues, across communities, from everywhere. Pastor B. Herbert Martin from Progressive Church. Hey, very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Well, I'm B. Herbert Martin. I have a small congregation located in the near south side of Chicago. 
uh, in the Bronzeville neighborhood where we have seen too much death and dying of children. Too many mothers and fathers following caskets to the cemetery. It should be in reverse, shouldn't it? Children should bury their parents and not parents uh, their kids. Before I go any further, I want to pause and give thanks for Representative Golar for the courageous stand that she has had to put this uh, House bill before the General Assembly. And we demand that it be acted on and let us lift our voices to do it. Let us our voices to do just that. Now, uh, one of the things that I do, one of the groups that I do represent, and I want to say that, I am a part of what is called the Council of Religious Leaders of Metropolitan Chicago. That means that the broad sweep of interfaith communities are in full support of what we're doing today. And I bring you their best wishes and encouragement. I also think that it is not by accident that we are on these steps doing what we're doing when President Obama and Congress are doing what they are doing on Capitol Hill. And we are praying that more of those congressmen get, well, we just say have a come to Jesus meeting. Amen. And, and, and come to their senses that we do pass gun laws that make sense, that matter as if people are, uh, are, are free to live their lives in peace in these neighborhoods. I also believe that we cannot do this alone. Right. Every community has got to be involved. Right. The corporate community, the business yeah. community, the religious community, and government and politicians. And let us lift our voice until earth and heaven ring, until it is done. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Um, thank you, Pastor Martin. In December, when the tragedy at Sandy Hook took place, it touched a lot of us. Not because it was Newtown, because we have a Newtown every four weeks in Chicago. That's right. That's right. That's right. But the impact of 26 people dying, 20 of those being first graders, <laughs> has galvanized this nation and today in Washington as the U.S. Senate picks, takes up the issue under the guidance of President Obama and Senator Durbin and our legislative leaders there. How many people today on the bus called and said common sense gun laws? Common sense gun laws. All right. One group said enough is enough and we're getting involved. No longer can we sit idly by. And that group is Moms Demand Action for Common Sense Gun Laws. And I'm proud to introduce Christine Fenno from, from Moms. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mark. Moms rule. We all do. We're all here. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK. My name is Christine Fenno. I'm from the Chicago chapter of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. We have Moms Demand Action members joining this rally at the Capitol today and we're so glad to see everyone here and be a part of this. And I'm so glad you can hear me. But can they hear us? Can our lawmakers in the halls of power make decisions for the hard-working families of Illinois hear us? I am raising two preschoolers, twins, and I am very used to raising my voice with them. If I have to. But I have not always known how to find my voice when it comes to things going on in my community. It often seems like it's someone else's place, it's someone else's job. Yes. And today, now that I'm here, an advocate for common sense gun policies, volunteering my tail off with Moms Demand Action, today I know my place, I know my job, and it's here with you. Raising my voice on behalf of my children and all children in my community who deserve to grow up. Yes who deserve a safe school and deserve to leave school each day without worrying whether they'll make it home alive. 
We know that parents deserve a secure community where kids can play on the front porch, where they can hang in the park after their high school exams, and where a tiny five-month-old baby can get her diaper changed after a visit with her grandma and not have her body riddled with bullets when her life literally just began. Let's do more then think about Hydea Pendleton and pray about Janila Watkins and all the children that we have lost. Let's demand answers. Let's demand to be heard. That's right. <clears throat> a mother from Newtown, Connecticut, a yet another mom in this country's ever-growing club of parents who are mourning a child lost, she said that her son's voice was like music. Her son's voice to her sounded just like music. We know what that means. Mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandparents, neighbors, friends, we know. We all treasure the voice of the ones we love. It's our pursuit of happiness, hearing that voice say, I love you. And we hear a lot about the rights of people who love their guns and people who love making money from guns. But yeah. our love for our families right. is stronger. Right. 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 And we know our rights, a right to safety, a right to stay alive family members who need us. And innocent children who know nothing of politics or amendments, they have a right to grow up. Yeah. So remember the voice of the people that you love and let it remind you to find your voice. Let your friends and family see a vocal citizen who insists on sane, safe, strong measures that improve public safety. I urge you to find support in your community. Find support with Moms Demand Action. We are not just for moms. And do not conceal your voice. Do not conceal what you have to say about conceal and carry. Good. Tell your state representatives you need to be heard. You want a community that's more safe, not less safe. More common sense, not more neighbors armed with guns. We need to keep telling them, I demand action. Keep raising your voice until we are heard. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. I think I'm shrinking. Um, <laughs> if you look at this sign right here that says, Love thy neighbor, not thy gun. What a mess. And the woman holding it is Sylvia Brooks from ABJ on the southeast side of Chicago. Sylvia and I were just talking a moment ago, and she said to me, Seven people on her block have been killed, killed in the last year by guns. Sylvia is here today to be their voice. Just like we're all here to be those people's voices and talking about common sense gun measures. Thank you, Sylvia, for being here. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah. I'm Susan Johnson, the executive director of Chicago Citizens for Change. Through our primary program, Chicago Survivors, we serve the surviving family members in the aftermath of youth violence. We serve their desperate and practical needs in their unfathomable and complicated grief, and we serve them as they ask the hardest questions. How did this happen? Why did this happen? And what can we do so this will never happen again? And for over 70% of our families, there is no answer. Right. Because as law enforcement investigates over and over, the trail goes cold. There's a weapon, but it is entitled, so the trail goes cold. There's a gun, but the owner says maybe it was lost, maybe it was stolen, and the trail goes cold. Our families deserve more. Right. 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 I'm Joy McCormick because over 30% of all guns that were used in crimes were purchased legally in Cook County because I am a parent of a child who was murdered by a semi-automatic weapon that was purchased for $300. Wow. Because I represent over 600 other families who are walking in this nightmare of our journey. Because since 2007, over 2,300 other families in Chicago have lost children to gun violence, I demand. 
I demand that our public officials understand that we are your constituents. That's right. We are your voices. Right. You represent us. That's right. Say that again. You represent us. That's right. You represent us. I demand. I demand, I demand a plan for our children for the future. The future! 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 Children, the babies of this world today, we gotta pass this law. Yeah. We gotta That's right. We gotta yes. We gotta That's right. We gotta We yes. will. We will. <clears throat> Next is Pam Bosley, mother of Terrell Bosley, and one of the voices of Purpose Over Pain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you tired of the violence? Yeah. yeah. Are you tired of the violence? Yeah. Kids, pictures hanging up. Hold your pictures up, parents. We all lost our children to violence. We're tired of the violence. We're tired of burying our children, and we need to stop. So that's why we're here today on Spring. We on these grounds. We want to stop. I'm listening to everybody. So these representatives that we missed, that we're meeting with today, they chose to be in that job. They chose to represent us. So we want for them today. We want them to represent us. Repeat after us. Represent us. Yeah. Represent us. Say it with me. Represent us. So we get out there today, we want to talk to them because they say they for us, yeah. they come here every day, they supposed to represent us, we voted them in, so we expect them to do their job. Right. So we'll go up against them today and they're going to represent us and they, we're going to make a difference, we're going to change this, we're not burying no more of our children, right. I'm not burying no more of my sons, I have two more, and I, I, have, I have to allow them to live, so we got to work together, we got to unify, and we got to do this. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. One of those representatives who represent us is here and has a fairly new member. She's been a clear voice on the issue of common sense, not just on gun laws, but on a lot of laws. It is my pleasure to introduce my mother's favorite state representative, <laughs> Kelly Cassidy. Thank you. And you know what? I represent all of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> if your rep doesn't do it for you, I'll carry it for you. I'm there. All right. All right. For my three little boys, for your sons, for all of your babies, this is the time. That's it's right. enough. Yeah. We cannot continue to, to look away and allow for sales to go on without background checks. We cannot allow this pretense of lost and stolen. The fact that we cannot get the most simple things passed is enough. That's right. I am on fire and I can see all of you are too. I am so thrilled to be standing here with you. I'm so happy to see this beautiful sea. Energy and fury and I, I cannot wait for you to bring it into the building. We're coming. Bring it in. Get it to all of us. Let it be known. Right. That you are moms, you are dads, you are brothers, you are sisters, you are cousins, and you're Grandma. tired of the funerals. Yeah. 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 No more. Thank you so much for being here. Hey! <laughs> I see some of my constituents over there, and they're happy to share me with all of you. So thank you. Get in there, and let's get this done. Thank you. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.